Good evening. My name is Jonathan Lau, and I'm the uh, presenter here uh, this evening. I just wanted to uh, introduce myself briefly. Um, I'm the owner-operator of O3 Vets. Uh, we work with ozone therapy, uh, ultraviolet blood irradiation therapy uh, primarily, and um, we manufacture and sell equipment. We do training. Um, I've been involved in this for a number of years now and have learned a great deal um, through being able to sit in uh, a lot of uh, hours of lectures and reading of articles and books and amassing a library um, of materials and uh, um, traveling the world um, to different ozone conferences. Uh, and so it's my pleasure to be able to pass on to you some of the information um, that we now have uh, and its application in um, how to treat animals, really. So let's get started. Um, this is going to be a, a brief presentation. I'm going to give a brief introduction to ozone therapy and then uh, focus in on mastitis and how to treat mastitis using ozone. Um, so let's go ahead and advance here. First, what is ozone? Um, it's an energized, unstable form of oxygen. It's called O3 uh, because it's basically three oxygen molecules that have bonded together. Um, basically, uh, what happens is there's a energy source, a high voltage uh, electricity, typically, um, that passes through oxygen. And when that happens, whether that be a lightning bolt or uh, an ozone generator that generates a high voltage, um, the oxygen molecules are ripped apart and very quickly um, they form back together. Well, some of them come back together as O3, three molecules uh, bonded together instead of just two molecules, um, which would be your typical O2, obviously. But these three oxygen molecules are unstable. Um, they, they are not happy in that state uh, because they're sharing electrons and uh, they don't do that very well. So they look to revert very quickly back to O2 and that's what happens. Um, there's, ozone has a half-life in air of about two hours, so every two hours you'll lose about 50% of the ozone that was there. Um, one of the most powerful sterilizers in the world, so it's very potent um, oxidizer and that's how it works. It's a reactive gas um, that, again, can sterilize through oxidation. So it's used in a number of different applications. Here's just a quick graphic just to show you um, how it's formed again. And uh, as I say there, ozone is naturally occurring gas within our stratosphere, but we are also able to generate ozone. So um, with that high voltage of electrical current that's passed through oxygen, there's split. They reform O3 instead of O2. That's what we call ozone, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So that's uh, just briefly uh, what ozone is. Uh, ozone is regulated as a medical treatment in, at least to my knowledge, these four countries, Brazil, Cuba, Italy, and Russia. I've heard up to 13 countries. I don't have proof of that, um, but uh, it may be that there are up to 13 countries that regulate it as a medical treatment in their um, health laws. Uh, but it's practiced really all over the world, uh, including here in the United States. Um, basically, anywhere you find people, um, you're going to find that ozone therapy is used. There's a number of major works that have been done on ozone therapy. Uh, it's This is one of them. I, ISCO-3 uh, is an organization. The uh, International Scientific Committee on Ozone Therapy that has um, put together a number of documents that are helpful. Uh, the Russian Ozone Therapy and Practice Health Manual um, is very helpful. Uh, Dr. Veliovaci um, wrote Ozone, a new medical drug, um, not all too long ago. And uh, it's a, a, a large book that he put a lot of research and time into. And he's done a lot, a lot of research on ozone therapy and contributed heavily to the cause. 
Um, this comes from Germany. This is ozone in medicine, the low-dose concept. Uh, as it says, guidelines and treatment strategies. And this comes, again, from Hansler, um, who's one of the leading ozone therapy um, doctors and companies as it pertains to the production or, of ozone equipment. Um, and they've done a bit of work there. This is uh, one of the newer ones, the World Federation of Ozone Therapies Review of Evidence-Based Ozone Therapy. And it's about a 50-page document with about 50 pages worth of uh, references. Um, it's interesting for those who are involved in this work like we are. And that just came out in 2015. Um, brief history. Uh, ozone was officially discovered in 1785 and synthesized in 1840. Uh, the first ozone generator was crafted in 1857. Um, in 1873, we discovered the ability to eliminate microorganisms, so it began to be used in that uh, capacity. Then in 1885, there was a textbook that was published on medical applications, believe it or not. Um, so quite some time ago, you can see we're well over uh, um, 100 years into its use uh, in medicine. Um, and then in 1957, the first modern ozone generator was built. Uh, so we had uh, the ability at that point to analyze actually the concentration of the ozone and not just put out ozone without having any idea really what, what uh, levels we were putting out. Um, presently, there are over 40 known ozone organizations throughout the world and companies like Germany and France and the United States, Japan, China, Mexico, Switzerland, South Africa, Brazil, Mex Mexico, etc. Um, so there's a lot of different organizations that uh, work with ozone therapy and have for a number of years. There's over 26,000 ozone practitioners, some say closer to um, 35,000. Uh, hundreds of medical studies. Uh, so I've, I've heard uh, 1,700 uh, is probably a really close number. Um, so there's a lot of information available if you want to go look for it. Uh, and, and, and so uh, point B, uh, don't be disturbed uh, or think that there's not much uh, real evidence when you hear the word ozone therapy. There, there is. Um, ozone isn't just a, what we know it as is a pollutant oftentimes or just for use to, to sterilize uh, uh, equipment or um, uh, water or that type of a thing. Um, it's actually been used for a long time in medicine. So what are the effects of medical ozone? Well, Dr. Frank Schallenberger, um, who practices here in the United States, says that oxygen utilization appears to be the single most important determinant of health, aging, and degenerative disease. So uh, the importance of it cannot be overstated, the oxygen utilization. And as we look at ozone's part in that, uh, one of the things that Dr. Schallenberger mentions is that through a complex chemical process, ozone is able to stimulate oxygen utilization, which in turn stimulates the synthesis of antioxidant buffering enzymes. And these antioxidant buffering enzymes are vital to our body having a, a good balance, uh, not being... Uh, um, overrun uh, with, uh, with oxidants, but also um, being able to buffer those and uh, create antioxidants. And we all hear about the use of antioxidants in our diet and foods that, are, uh, that produce antioxidants, etc. cetera. Um, but we know at the same time that uh, we need oxygen to live and to thrive. I mean, that's obvious and we need, our body needs to maintain a good uh, balance there. Um, and primarily uh, when ozone uh, or when our bodies are um, not utilizing oxygen effectively, we're sick. Um, we get sick easily in that case. And older, the older you get, the more the less you are able to utilize oxygen efficiently. So it's very, very important that our cells are able to do that to uh, taking that oxygen and pass it around the body and, and to oxygenate so that we heal quickly, so that we're healthy, etc. cetera. Um, so that's the primary effect is the use, uh, the, the uh, ability to 
um, oxygenate and utilize oxygen that's available. But besides that, it's also a bactericidal, fungicidal, and viricidal. Um, so it's used in a number of uh, infectious type situations. Um, immune modulating, it has an anti-inflammatory effect. And if you look at a number of studies, you'll, you'll see some of the ways in which these, um, these particular effects are are acting, uh, but we're not going to go into detail there. Ozone is also used as, as an analgesic, um, and ozone injections uh, are common, something called prolozone, that's a, a term coined by Dr. Schallenberger, I want to give him credit for that. Um, prolozone are, are injections into joints, um, and, and that's a very effective way to treat a lot of degenerative issues. Detoxification as well. So detoxifying our bodies when there's buildups of toxins in our in our tissue or in the blood, um, we can help to reduce that through the use of ozone therapy. Um, oxygen deficiency. Dr. S uh, Stephen Levine says in all serious disease states, we find the concomitant low oxygen state, low oxygen in the body tissues is a sure indicator for disease, hypoxia, or lack of oxygen in the tissue, and is the fundamental cause for all degenerative disease. So he's agreeing here with Dr. Schallenberger, or maybe Dr. Schallenberger is agreeing with him um, on this particular issue. Uh, Dr. Margot Roman, who works with us uh, quite extensively, says the ozone therapy is a phenomenal way to promote health in our pets naturally because of its ability to inactivate bacteria and virus while at the same time Stimulating the immune system, it is my tool of choice. If your pet has been suffering, you want a healthy pet, I think ozone therapy is one of the best ways to get there. I would encourage the vast majority of my patients to consider using this treatment regardless of the illness. Now, when we look at the use of ozone in the treatment of mastitis, we're talking uh, primarily about intramammary infusion. Um, of the gas, actually, directly into the tea. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use an ozone generator to generate ozone, uh, of course, and uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our generator with uh, pure oxygen. We always use oxygen to create medical ozone. Um, we get that running. We clean the tea using an alcohol swab. Um, we connect the ozone-resistant tube to the ozone generator. We connect the cannula to the ozone-resistant tubing, and we turn on the generator. We insert the cannula into the teat, and we set our oxygen flow at about 0.5 liters per minute. And there's a, a regulator on our oxygen tank that allows us to do that. Um, and then we let that flow uh, for about five minutes for a total dose of about 25,000 micrograms. Uh, then we're going to just go ahead and turn that off and remove it. So it's a, it's a fairly simple process. The previous slide kind of showed you a picture of what that would look like, um, that, that tube it would be running um, to the uh, this tube here, let's see, right here would be running to the ozone generator, um, so that's uh, that worked directly into the, through a cannula into the T. Um, so yeah, that's uh, uh, how that would work. Um, let's move on. So there's been a number of of studies on ozone therapy in general. Uh, a couple, this one is the only study that I am aware of that deals specifically with this issue. Um, this was in February of 2000 that it was accepted. Um, and it comes from Japan and they go through and they treat, this is basically, this, the uh, method that I just showed you is basically what they use um, to do the treatment. Um, and they just say here in the uh, abstract, uh, at the very bottom, the newly developed ozone therapy method was proven to be effective, safe, and cost-effective. Carries no risk of drug residues in milk. Now that's a very important point uh, because uh, whether it be with traditional uh, dairy farmers or organic dairy farmers, um, the residue uh, in having to hold the, the cow out, uh, whether it be for meat or for milk, um, is very, very uh, important issue. Uh, we, we, have, we lose time, we lose money when that happens. So with ozone therapy, we don't have that issue. 
uh, because as we mentioned early on, uh, ozone therapy reverts very quickly back to just oxygen. And so once it does what it needs to do, it oxidizes um, there in the tissues. And when it, uh, it reverts back to, to oxygen, that's all you have left. Um, ozone, when it hits, let's say, tissues or blood or some organic material of that nature, it, it turns into lipids and peroxides and, and the oxygen then. Um, and uh, it does, again, it, it oxidizes and, uh, and is able to uh, get rid of bacteria, virus, uh, really any pathogens that might be there. Um, so what we're trying to do with this particular treatment method is uh, to give farmers a really easy way, an effective way to treat mastitis, um, even uh, organic farmers. Uh, so we're working on that right now to try to get that approved for organics. Um, here's another study that was done on the treatment uh, for retained placenta in dairy cows, a uh, really effective way to do that as well. Um, and uh, have heard uh, from um, one of our vets who works with it in horses actually, uh, that has been extremely helpful in this reproductive area um, in uh, some of their mares. Um, and so there's a number of doctors, vets, who, who we know who are using it in these types of ways. Um, there we go. Uh, ozone therapy, I just want to kind of sum up here, is very safe. Over a million ozone therapy treatments are being done each year with remarkable safety. That's uh, primarily in humans, but there's a number of veterinarians around the world also who use it. It's an effective way to treat a variety of conditions. Um, for mastitis, it's quick. The total process will take about 10 minutes or less. Um, you should need one to two treatments total. Uh, to uh, cure that cow um, of the mastitis. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, just re-underscoring, re, uh, I guess, here the idea that it's oxidizing pathogens through direct contact as well as enabling the body to respond to the infection through the stimulating the, uh, of the immune system. And then the immune system able to take control and go from there. Um, I'm going to play a quick video here, I think, and hopefully uh, you can hear it on, um, on your side there as well. So let's listen in. Well, we're having a little bit of trouble with uh, getting the video going. So I'm going to forego that for now um, and just move on. Sometimes we have trouble with the audio anyway um, on that. So uh, if you're interested in that, I can send it to you. Um, send you a link to where you can watch that. So just real quickly here as a company, uh, we're putting on trainings and workshops. We have newsletters that are going out on a consistent basis. And then we do have an annual conference. Uh, this year it's going to be in Colorado Springs, Colorado, at a resort there. And uh, there will be a number of different topics. Uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola is going to be our uh, keynote speaker uh, this year. So we're excited about that. Um, one of the top alternative medicine doctors in the world. Uh, we also provide uh, equipment. So we uh, manufacture some of it, we, we uh, import some of it, and we sell it here along with uh, the training that we do. So those are some of the things that we're involved with. I just want to thank you for your time and hope that you'll stop by our website, o3vets.com, and check anything out, sign up for our newsletter, and uh, let us know um, how we can serve you better, what information you'd like to know from us, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much and have a great evening.